break room at the CBBA. Very happy to have special guest here with me, Meg Myers. Hi. Meg is here. Meg, you look absolutely fantastic. Everyone's been, uh, we, we've all been looking forward to meeting you. Uh, obviously, we've been uh, been playing uh, your, your last hit, Desire, from the uh, Make a Shadow EP uh, for a while now. It's been a huge hit this year, and I know I was just talking to you um, off air. It's been a crazy year, hasn't it? It's been crazy, yeah. Like, I feel like I'm waking up right now. I'm still, I just was in the band. Um, it's been, yeah, I mean, don't really ever get a break. Uh, we're also trying to finish the album up, so whenever I'm off tour, I'm just in the studio constantly. So, but it's great, you know. I'm, I'm so happy and grateful. It's just, it's all kind of a blur. Too. Uh, Meg, you know, I want to tell you, I was just talking to you. Are you familiar with Ben Seether? Yeah. Uh, I talked to Sean Morgan a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it, he was a great interview because he was going off on musicians that he liked and disliked, and he was hating the music scene today. And he said specifically at one point, he's like, you know, but there is some great music out there, and he named. Royal Blood and Meg Myers were the two examples he specifically gave. That's so awesome. Yeah, he was like, you know, I, I heard her, and I was like, really? I just talked to her last week, and he was like, oh, you know, I heard her on the radio, and she is absolutely great. And that was literally, you were one of the that examples so he gave. That's so cool. Wow. I see, wow. I see, I'm glad That's you hadn't so heard that one nice. yet. Oh, thank you. And that's the respect you're getting on. You know, you've been blowing up for a while now. Um, you're going to be performing for our uh, VIP uh, crowd at the uh, party upstairs in just a little bit. Yeah. You just happen to bring a guitar with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just happens to be here. You know what? Could you play a song maybe for us? Sure. Make, uh, a song. Well, you know what? i got to tell you, um, ever since I first heard your song, Desire, and saw the video, I've been a monster fan. And I'm just going to tell you, listen, you are amazingly sexy, and that's one of the hottest videos I've ever seen ever. I, I have to say that. Thank you. Desire or monster? Uh, well, both, anyway, but specifically, when I first saw the uh, video for Desire, I was like, Oh my God! In fact, I even like commented with a couple of DJs. Oh my God! Can you believe that? Listen, as a woman, there is nothing sexier in the world you can say than "How do you want me?" That's just the best line ever delivered, I think. Well, yeah. <laughs> Kicking off this year's Merry Meltdown, I've got Jeff, AJ, Sam, and Chris, as you were, here at, hanging out with us. Yo, yo, yo. How you guys doing? doing? How you guys doing? <laughs> the winners of our local Palooza, third time was the charm for you guys. Finally got it. Yeah, we're beyond, I mean, we're living on this, this crazy natural high right now that is unbelievable. We're so beyond excited. It's, and we had to like an army of people coming out. We were so focused on the performance and just going crazy and putting on the show. And this year for me it was different because I just came into it like, you know what, let's just put on a good show. I'm not worried about going, you know, crazy. I'm not worried about trying to overdo it. Like, let's just play our instruments to the best of our ability and, and go into it. I, I guarantee that probably had a lot to do with it because a I lot really of times so. that's the best way. Like, you, you sit there and you just spin and plan out every minute oh, yeah. of something yeah. and then you're all tense about it. And sometimes you're like, you know what, let's just let it rip and let's see what happens and then boom, stuff works out. Come here, Steven. Come sit on my lap, buddy. Steven Snyder just Steven walked into Snyder the room, the our uh, lead guitarist. There we go. Where you been, man? Where you been, man? You're late, for, you're late for the big radio interview. I'm mixing a, uh, a high school show choir. High school musical. You're mixing. Yeah, I was mixing. A high school musical. He was yeah. auditioning for high school musical. <laughs> that's, that's, that's blowing the whole rock and roll for image, man. Yeah, that's what I do. He's a sound guy. We've got, of course, the Dirty Heads, Pennywise, oh, Everlast, man. Alien Ant Farm, Authority Zero, and you guys kick off the show. How, like, how exciting is this? Is this, is this, is this like a big moment in your lives right now? Yeah. It's beyond a dream come true, honestly. Like, every guy who joins a band as a kid, like, wants to play that big arena show. Exactly. You, you watch the movie Rockstar, you're like, I want to be that guy. Like, But I think, I don't know, it's just a, it's definitely a dream come true. We're just really grateful to all of our fans and to you guys for doing this whole local Palooza thing. It's just awesome. I mean, X is the one station that truly gives to the local artists and the local scene and whether it's a local palooza venue or it's or it's just some other show down the road or just even playing it on local band spotlight or whatever the case may be it's i mean you guys are constantly giving back to uh, the local artists and that it's cool too because i mean a lot of a lot of local artists in our scene they find out about other bands because of the radio station too you know like yeah different <coughs> bands that are playing in different areas like we've come in contact with a lot of bands just because of the local band spotlight that you guys do on sundays you know absolutely always happy and then of course and it's your time now, got the guys from Assuming You Survive so doing the VIP show. It's oh, your yeah. time to be on the big stage uh, tonight. <laughs> you guys have any little ritual that uh, you put, do just before you go on? Yeah, get yeah. yourself we, ready. We well, I I get the guys together. We all 99 bananas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Off. But we sit around, we, we huddle up, and we you know we pep talk it. We do a little prayer before we go on, and, and just you know um, go out there and, and you know talk to each other and just we you have know, a chant. 
let each other know why we're here and, and that we're a band of brothers trying to get this you know thing going and, and that we're just you know blessed and happy to be in the position that we're in to not only be playing music but I mean look at look at all the years that we've been working at this and now we're like in a place you know a huge arena and I mean you know Phil from assuming said backstage we ran into him and he said um, <laughs> that he you know try not to tear up because you know and that's honestly the first thing that comes to you know my mind is like I'm gonna get out there and like I'm already feeling like that emotional like burst Aww. of like man this is crazy like you know don't cry <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's Sorry, Adrian, why don't I have you introduce everybody else in that? Come on, right, let's well, do the round table. Adrian, uh, next to me, I have my amazing friend. Phil Adams, guitar. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Give me this mic. What's going on? I'm Joe, I'm the bass player. Take that. Chris, I play drums. Hey everybody, I'm Johnny Silva, guitar player. He's the new guy. Johnny the Walker. new guy yeah. in the band. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any kind of hazing for the new guy? Oh, I don't know, no. like an initiation <laughs> kind of rituals, things he, like that? Adrian? We took him out to Hollywood with our good buddy Ryan Seaman and uh, we got him completely blacked out, literally, <laughs> at a downtown Hollywood festival. So that was the first haze. Uh, we made him hang yeah. with us. Blacked out in the middle. We got, we, were, we got we showed up an hour later. He's passed out already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't in front think. of our manager. Such people. Yeah, failed people. the test. Basic. First oh, yeah, I, think I, I passed the test. That yeah. was the thing. <laughs> and then uh, he cut. He had to cut his hair. What, that, which that wasn't our rule at all. The manager rule. The manager <laughs> rule. But uh, he had initially ten shows to play with us until he was officially in the band. So by passing out and cutting his hair, that knocked off, I think, four shows yeah, on that list. Yeah, that worked out well. So yeah. now he's in the band. The rest is history. Really After today, you guys got a break for a while? Uh, no, well, next weekend on Friday, we're playing at the observatory with Atreyu. It's just us and Atreyu, and they'll be doing the, the full Curse album in its entirety. So, oh, sweet. Yeah, that yeah. turned out awesome. We got asked personally by... Uh, by then to play the show, so we were like beyond. Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be important. Like that's what a compliment, you know. Yeah. You know, from a band like that, it ask you to it's do. It's refreshing to take a break from playing so many shows. You know, year after year. Then now we get to take a step back, six months off. We've been home since June, so that's very, very nice. You've never had that much time on. Yeah. I mean, no, I've never I, I, taken I, that I'm much time. Just... Out. I, I, <laughs> I'm so used to playing two shows every weekend, and we go from playing two shows to playing one show every three months, and I am not handling it well. He's having I've withdrawals. Lost more weight already. And <laughs> yeah, and you can hardly can afford to do that. No, I can't work so <laughs> You know me, you know I need more than one cheeseburger. You <laughs> <laughs> steak dinner. Well, it's a good assuming we survived playing uh, upstairs uh, right before Meg Myers at the, uh, at the VIP party. So, of course, you guys have the VIP band, making you actually the most special band. Oh, oh, right. Right. I mean, the very important people get to hear you. <laughs> Well, it should be fun. We don't play a lot of acoustic shows. I think the last acoustic show we did was with Switchfoot. Was last year. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. With so, you guys, too. I mean, with X. X. Yeah, that was Party. with X. So we don't really do it often, but so it's fun to do it, actually. We've been having a blast practicing the past few weeks, and it's going to be interesting. So Is there like, is a designated guy in the band for almost everything like that? You're the designated cook kind of thing? Pretty yeah, much. I think so. Uh, Phil's the designated comedian. <laughs> um, Get the <laughs> Joe's the designated... <laughs> Dad, Daddy, man. Yeah, I'll take care of what he is. <laughs> Chris handles all our money so we don't spend it. And Johnny is the new guy. <laughs> Johnny is the dancer. Oh, he's the band dancer. He's the band dancer. Yeah, the band dancer. <laughs> he's the hot one in the band now. Who makes <laughs> who over. Who's buy, who buys all the beer and the booze and makes sure everything is there? That's me. Okay. Adrian, there we, well, is sure. it, that's, that's your job. Man. Yeah, that is my job. <laughs> Perfect. What's the best Christmas movie of all time? We always arguing about this with some people about three hours ago. Hit me right now. Best Christmas movie there is. Uh, mine, Chris again. Hope alone. Home Alone. Down. All right. Home Alone. I, I don't know. I that really so I mean, that's just so classic. I just. I'm a bad Santa, or. I'm a big fan of that. I, I, to me, Die Hard is my favorite Christmas oh, movie. Yeah. Oh, it technically yeah. counts well, as a Christmas movie. You know what? It totally does. That actually, I like that. Yeah. Jingle all the way. Jingle. I just watched that too the other Come day. Come on. My daughter. That was awesome. Hit that, Phil. It's all you. What do you think, uh, Phil? Santa Claus, number two. Number two. <laughs> Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. Tim Allen, bro. You gotta be right? kidding number me. Two, I don't know about all time, but that's, that's, that's a fan theory in my book. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's Santa Claus, too. Uh, yeah, you're fine. I think the two of them, that works. Once again, we're hanging out. Assuming we survive, we're going to be going on in just a little bit at our special VIP party. We're gearing up for... So, 
Mary Meltdown, yeah. you guys excited to play it? Yeah, we're super stoked. We're stoked to be home. We're supposed to, supposed to be playing a local show, so we're just. You got friends and family here. And friends and family, the whole shebang, you know? Only an hour from home, so couldn't get better. Your guys' uh, new music video, Sound of Change. Mm. Let's just talk about that. That was an awesome video. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, we just, we hadn't done much live footage before, and we have a really good relationship with Red Camera, and we knew that the Red Rocks show was going to be special. Uh, it had sold out months and months before, and we, you know, were really stoked on that. We couldn't believe that, so we wanted to capture it. And once we got an edit back from Red, we were like, "Dude, I think we should just make this. Uh, we should just make this a music video because we're going to actually do a whole live DVD out of that show." But we got that first edit back, and it's such a powerful song and such, you know, uh, that song is very special to us and and. We want it to be very uplifting, you know, and for some reason there was just energy in that footage and in that edit that we thought, hey, I think this just would be a really good idea for a video and there's, so it just lets the music and the lyrics speak for themselves rather than trying to tell a story through some music video. And I mean, just, what does the song mean to you? Sound of change. I mean, well, I mean, I, like most people, I mean, you go through ups and downs through your life, and and recently I've been going through some downs, and that song, usually, you know, it, you hear from other people that, that, oh, this song helped me get through this, this song helped me get through that, but that song actually, writing it and singing it on stage and doing that, helped me get through a lot of, of my downs. So that song is really close to me, close to my heart. It's just, it's something that, don't be afraid of change, don't be scared to get things out of your life that are toxic, that you don't need in your life anymore. Um, or, or things that just make you uncomfortable that can possibly make your life better, but you're so stuck in your ways. You know, it's okay to change. Take that, make it better. If things are bad, that, that's all right. Take them, make them better. Always look for that silver lining and just not to be scared of change because no matter what you do in your life, it's always gonna happen. That's the one thing that is always gonna happen is things are gonna fucking change. So the more open, you have an open mind to that, you know, maybe, a, the, maybe the easier life will get, you know? And so we just wanted to kind of call the arms for people to just, if you're going through some shit or you're not, you know, whether you are, just don't be afraid of change. In the new album, it's just, it's just a different sound for the Dirty Heads. Is yeah, definitely. Where, is that where you guys were going? Or? 100% we sat around and said we can't do the same thing again. And this is our, you know, fourth album. We can't do the same thing again. For us, for our fans, we need to grow. We need to evolve. We just need to do something. And we want to step up our live show. What do you guys want to do? And we talked about it. We wrote Sound of Change in one hand and a couple other songs. We found that sound. And we even said, you know, like, I know some fans are going to get pissed at this. We know we might lose some fans. But if, if we don't, then we didn't do our job. And we didn't push ourselves enough as musicians and as people. So we went out and you know, did the best that we could. We went fucking full bore, you know, did some crazy stuff, did some stuff, but I think at the end of the day, no matter what we do, it's still gonna be a Dirty Heads album with the lyrics, with, with Sonically. The more I listen to it, the more I'm like, actually, this does kind of sound like a Dirty Heads album. It is a little different, but it's still pretty much a Dirty Heads album, and uh, we're really stoked. For me, it's the best piece of music that we've ever that we've ever put out. It's the best piece of art, it's the best album, there's the best songs. For me, I, I the guys knocked it out of the park. I've, I've never been so proud and so confident in something that I put out. Well, there it is, Hype yeah. Nation, you heard it. Thank you so much. Dirty Heads, Merry Meltdown, X1039. It's going down, guys. All right, ready to perform right now, live for us, Meg Myers doing her hit song, Desire, on X1039, live at the CBBA.
039 Meg Myers. Thanks, Phil. Five at the CBBA. That was freaking great. I was just like, honestly, you belted that out even better than the than the single. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Broadcasted live from the CBBA, the Mary Meltdown, and kicking off in just a couple of hours. I'm hanging out with Jason, Brandon, Sean, and Mike. Authority Zero in the house. What's going on, guys? How we doing? Hello. Happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Very happy to have you guys here. Uh, now, with uh, it's Christmas time, you got most of, or at least two of you are from Arizona. I know the band originally hails from Arizona. Mm. What is, is it like a Christmas cactus? Is that what people do there in Arizona? Or? They should. Oh, yeah. And yeah, they probably and I think they do. Yeah. I mean, palm tree, cactus tree. Something if I don't see one in my neighborhood, I'm gonna go put lights on a cactus as soon as I get home. I, I'm suddenly realizing that you're gonna have to talk into that microphone, right? There you go. There you go. There you go. Christmas lights on cacti is good. Yeah, I'm suddenly <laughs> realizing. Am I like the 189th person to try and make that joke? Yes. No, first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my boy. Now, we've been on tour since. I mean, this last year we've been on tour since basically January 29th of this year. We just finished up back in our hometown, back in Arizona Mesa, uh, on Halloween night. And we, like you said, we've got the next couple of months off just to kind of do the holiday stuff. And um, I was telling you a second ago, I'm actually you know, looking at taking off to Japan next Tuesday for about a week to go um, go out there for some vacation time with my wife and some friends. So that'll be kind of fun. Yeah, you guys are all going your separate ways at Christmas time. So you guys all spent to get away from each other for a month, which is always good. Um, you know, a couple of good. Everybody needs some way. Wives, dads, you know, loved ones, Brian especially. Brian. <laughs> oh, and Traddy. Yeah, so I talked to you uh, about a month ago, and I was asking you, like, when you have time off, what is your like your favorite thing to do? And uh, and sleep was your answer to me on that one. And yeah. I think like, there's a common thread with a lot of bands, like, especially you guys. You, know, you work hard, you tour all the time. You're like, when you get time off, you just don't want to do nothing, dude. It's nice, actually. Yeah, you do a lot on the road. Obviously, you know, you're out going, going, going. You you're getting naps out there, but you're not really sleeping. It's like the naps you're taking is just you're wearing off the night before, or you're just preparing for that same thing to happen the next night. So you're not really getting actual REM sleep. So when you get home, it's nice to actually try and catch up. You guys uh, run into uh, any of the other bands here yet tonight? At time, I, I, as far as like Alien Ant Farm, uh, Pennywise, Everlast, uh, I, I know you, you know all the bands and stuff. Who, who are you happiest to be uh, running into again tonight? Uh, it's good to see the Pennywise crew here, uh, Phil and Bob and those guys. Yeah, I see more of the crew than I've seen yeah, any yeah, the bands actually seen. to think so far. Bands. <laughs> yeah. They're sequestered I think we're the most somewhere. Around now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're sleeping. <laughs> I met some really nice gentlemen in red jackets. They were very helpful. They directed me out of the green room maze. It was good. Yeah. I felt like... Uh, good job. <laughs> good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. <laughs> good job, buddy. <laughs> Nobody cares. Man, thanks you for your input. <laughs> it's my birthday, whatever. Birthday. Is it really? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think some birthdays around Christmas sucks anyway. Once again, we're hanging out with Authority Zero. Um, and when you guys uh, go out on tour, uh, coming up later in January, I know you're going out with uh, Real Big Fish and uh, Less Than Jake. Um, and I, that's that's got to be a lot of fun. I, I don't know. Some of the best parts of being a band is, is like when you get to actually tour with other bands and people that you really like or are friends with, and, and, and it's a good time as well as just obviously the business. That's a big part of it. I mean, you can get we've had them before too. You get on tours where the people are complete, you know, you know what I mean. And it's just like it makes or breaks your entire month. You're out there for a long time, you know, and you have to deal with these people on a daily basis, and hopefully actually not deal with them, but have a good time with them, you know. And that's the cool thing about. Like you said, going out with bands like that is we've done tours together. We've been in different parts of the world with them and just made a, a friendship with a lot of these groups. And it's, it's just kind of like a big big camp. You go out and hang out and just enjoy watching their set, play your own set, and then hanging out all night until 5 a.m. Hey, you make one of those feels like Christmas. Uh, it's kind of more of a hassle and a pain. And you're not all into the whole, you're a you're Grinch, right? You know, no, I'm not a Grinch. I'm a selective Grinch because I think it's a year to year thing. You know what I mean? It's always ups and downs. You never know what the year is going to be like. It always kind of dictates what it's going to be like. How's this past year been for the whole band? It's been good. It's been busy. Um, we've been getting out there, you know, trying to uh, spread awareness of the band, you know, actually still being alive and putting music <laughs> out. And, you know, we got this new record coming January uh, 13th. It's dropping. Mm -hmm. Always and forever. That's my birthday. And woo, happy birthday, John. Yeah. And uh, I love John. Always and forever, yeah. It's coming out of the near. It's been a while getting this one like to come out. Has it been like a, like a difficult process oh, or what? Because I know that originally was you guys wanted to come out within the summer. Yeah, it's been a. It's probably been one of the most difficult processes the band's been through as a band. You know, and, and you know the entire time we've been together. 
um, you know, from label issues to health issues to, um, you know, just kind of, kind of losing, you know, footing when you're going over hurdles, man. There's a lot that comes with all that, like with like dealing with the label and trying to get a record out. And, uh, you know, we went through a lot of that. Like a lot of bands. You've seen all the negative aspects of the business and gone through all the crap and the lawyers and nonsense. Oh, like yeah. That. The positives, the negatives, all of it. We've done it. And you guys are just wrapping up the uh, Antarchy in the uh, USA tour. How many more, between, like, before that, between an Antology, uh, Truant, how many more Ant like names do you think you have like on reserve for future albums to come out? You never know. I mean, I think we're going to probably milk the Antarchy thing for a while because you can take that around to territories. Like uh, eventually, you know, we'll do like Antarchy in the UK. Okay, yeah. I'd say that was Antarchy obvious. in Japan, you know, Antarchy in India. <laughs> you know, wherever we end up, we can kind of peg, you know, we can kind of peg that right in there. Um, but, you know, uh, that was kind of like the thought process behind the name of the new record too was we wanted to kind of throw out a curveball. Uh, it just went, I mean, and we even did like little things online where we asked the fans, like, what should we call the next record? And everybody, it was funny to see everybody just kind of rack their brains online to try and come up with some kind of ant. Is, if nothing else, isn't that what's great for social media? Because I guarantee you guys got a couple of good ideas for oh, your yeah. fans. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, there's some, there's some, there's some clever people out there, man. They came with some good stuff and, and we're, we we kind of pride ourselves on being kind of goofy and You're clever man and kind of trying to be like kind of clever in a goofy way and stuff and some of it, you can tell it translates to the fans because they kind of have the same sense of humor and stuff but anyways we threw them a curveball we bought the record always in for it which is a if you have I feel so word, stupid. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I feel so stupid. I didn't even pick up on that because I was gonna say no. There's no and. Is this one? Yes, there is. See, we're witty. Oh wow. We're goofy witty. You guys are too damn smart for your own good. <laughs> That's what it is. You know, it's cool. There is that. Of course, this is our present to the people in the IE, and you guys are an IE band. We we love you here. You represent. You represent the IE. You are the biggest band out of yeah. the Inland Empire. This is our home. Uh, you know, I from Riverside. If uh. If uh, yeah, Riverside is our home. Technically, you know, we've we've kind of spread out a little bit throughout the Southland, you know, and come back. And Riverside's like the boomerang town. I call it the boomerang town. If you bail, you end up coming back for one reason or another. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, you know, it's funny because we kicked off the very beginning of the first leg of the Antarctic in the USA tour. We kicked off at the uh, downtown Riverside, mm -hmm. like out on the street. We played a big like street festival. Yes. And then now we're kind of ending the second leg, like the entire tour is ending right back at home again, which is really cool. It's so. just natural, back home and it's Christmas time, it's perfect. Yeah, definitely. It would be nice to have a little time off. Let's get Terry, Terry from Alien Ant Farm. Uh, they're going to be going on a third tonight. Thanks a lot for hanging out, man. Uh, have a great show. I appreciate you coming by and uh, hanging out with us. I always appreciate you guys uh, having us and taking care of us and stuff. Much love. All looking forward to seeing him. Can I say rest in peace to my friend Andy Colwatch? Please, go right ahead. Rest in peace, Andy. Love you and miss you. Broadcasting live from the Citizens Business Bank Arena, Mary Meltdown. What's up, guys? Hype Nation. Man, X139, Mary Meltdown. As you can see, Pennywise is in the building, guys. Pennywise is in the building. How's it's, it going? It's going good. A little, little hungover. Yeah? Working on fixing that up right now. Are you excited about uh, Mary Meltdown? Yeah, yeah. Looks like it's going to be awesome. First time doing it, so we're happy to be here. Good lineup. Yes, very good. Plenty of alcohol floating around backstage, so it should be good. So you guys just, uh, in July, you guys had your CD come out yesterday. Yep. Uh, just the influences and... Uh, I mean, that, it was basically like, we put, I don't know how many CDs, we put out like 10 CDs or something like that, and. Uh, over the years, we have a lot of songs that haven't uh, ever seen the light of day. We usually write about 40, 50 songs per record. So a lot of them are on the back burner. And, and a lot of the stuff we uh, put on this record was 25-year-old backyard party stuff yeah. that was never recorded in a studio. We had to go by like old demo tapes from, from club shows and literal, literally backyard parties and like rehearsals. Uh, we did a we did a benefit when uh, Jim came back to the band. We we did a benefit like a 25 year reunion type scenario, and we played a bunch of those songs. And it was it was uh, a lot of our old school friends were there, like you know old old dudes like me, and they knew they knew uh, like we played like six of these songs and they went crazy. But no one's ever heard them except those people that are actually in the backyards in Hermosa Beach. So 
we had such a good response we decided to put like all those songs in there and then a couple outtakes from like Full Circle and different albums and, and just give them a proper recording and, and uh, it's it's kind of cool because no one can give you can I say shit? Yeah. You can bleep that out right? People are, like when you put on a new album everyone's like I want to hear the old shit play the old shit it's like well we are this is like 25 year old shit <laughs> but they don't know that so yeah but you just tell them so you're like you can't Sorry, <laughs> your your argument doesn't stand. This is old shit, so you have to like it automatically, right? So it seems to be working pretty good. We've we've been busting out a couple songs and here and there, and uh, it's been fun. And it was kind of a good way to just kind of get back to the roots. And we just we didn't do a lot of preparation. We just went in the room and played like old school, and and didn't use all the computer gadgetry that everybody's into now. It makes an album like really shitty, in my opinion. Like it takes the life out of it. So it was cool to just kind of go back to the feeling of like. We have no money to record, and we're just going to do this. We just came out of our own pockets and did it, and then turned into the record company. Then everyone stepped foot in the building. So no opinions from anybody, no outside, like, oh, you need this. It was just did it, threw it out there, and people seemed to like it. So we're stoked. And what's the response from the fans? It's good. I mean, it's, it's, it's strange because, yeah, across the board, it's been like no one can really say anything bad about it because it's literally the old, the old stuff, and that's everybody wants to hear the band, you know, they want to hear the first, second, third album, and you know, all your albums after that suck. Apparently, <laughs> last time I last time I checked, but uh, yeah, you know, so it's like going back to your roots, but it's kind of like it was a guaranteed going back to your roots because it was actually roots song. So the, everyone's really stoked. We, you know, we're getting like people singing the lyrics full blast. So it's it's pretty cool. So what is the song that you guys just love playing live? I mean, what is just the song? Um. I mean, I like I like most of the songs live. Like, I mean, they all have the different feel and different crowd participation. But obviously, Broham is the one that you know is the. It just uh, it it has so much emotion behind it. With like Jason, our our bass player, you know, our original bass player that passed away. So there's that, and it's like a tribute to him now and other friends that have passed away. So I don't know. It's, it's one of those songs that just every night, no matter what's going on. When you play that, the crowd goes ballistic, and it's like people in the audience that have lost somebody, a friend, a family member, whatever. They they just go on, you know, they just turn it up to ten every night because there's they might have played at the, the brother's funeral or you know whatever. We hear all kinds of crazy stories about Broham, so that's that's the one that like puts the stands the hair up on your arms. Still. 